Hey, what's up, White Dragon fans? Basil the White Dragon Masters here at the uh, UFC's 182 post-fight review and uh, fight analysis. Uh, sorry, guys, I sound a little stuffy. I've been recovering from a crazy flu, all right? And so I hope you can hear me clearly. But um, uh, this card, uh, it's a sad card for me uh, because... Uh, what I'm about to tell you, you'll understand why it's a sad card for me. And I'm sure it's a sad card for a lot of other people um, that are out there. So let us uh, let me get right into it. Again, the White Dragons review. I'm going to talk about uh, the last three fights uh, uh, because we can't cover up uh, all the fights. It's going to take forever. So uh, let's, let's, let's get right into it. Okay, so UFC 182 overall... Okay, card. Not a not a uh, not a not a very amazing card. Uh, some fights were okay. It's one of those cards that when you finish watching it, you're not sure if you know you spent your money very well. So, okay, card. Okay, card. Uh, moving on. I definitely will. Uh, I'll throw in one thing. Josh Berkman. We saw him after a long, long time. Uh, I know this guy from the old Ultimate Fighter uh, TV show. Shoot, like, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago? I can't even remember how long it's been. Uh, but he, Josh Berkman versus, uh, I think he was fighting, who was he even fighting? I can't even remember. Oh, Hector Lombard, excuse me. Josh Berkman, yeah. Uh, so he came back, uh, and considering from that long layoff, I, um, I'm i actually uh, very surprised that they threw Hector Lombard at him. And he did a good job. Uh, <clears throat> he tried to stay away from Hector Lombard. He did a good job. Uh, but, uh, obviously, uh, and he tried to win. I mean, you could see that he was trying to finish Hector Lombard, but uh, just Hector Lombard was too strong for him. Uh, but, uh, that's not really the fight I was going to talk about. I just wanted to throw that in because I, I saw him after a long time. I was a little bit surprised. So, moving on to the last three fights. Let's go to the first, uh, to the, the to the, uh, third last fight. That's, um, uh, it was, uh, Nate Marquardt versus, uh, Brad Tavares. Nate Marquardt has always been one of my favorite fighters. Uh, unfortunately, he got cut from the UFC uh, a few times in the past. He used to be a really, really good fighter. In fact, people used to fear him every time he used to go in. He was a, a strong, bulky dude at 185. Big guy. Power shots. Knocks people senseless. Uh, and I thought I thought he was going to win uh, because I like Nate Marquardt and I like his style and I love him as a person. He's a very, he seems like a very humble fighter. Uh, but... <clears throat> I don't know, I think age is catching up to him, or, 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 or the rustiness is, is very much there since he got uh, cut from the UFC. Brad Tavares, on the other hand, did a great job. I mean, surprisingly, I, I, I thought Nate Marker was going to win. That was my pick. But, you know, he, 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 he basically, honestly, I mean, if I, according to my notes, you know, kicked Nate's ass for three rounds. He practically beat him up three rounds. You know, wasn't that good of a job. He was struggling. So... Brad Tavares won. Uh, I won't say congratulations because I, I like Nate Marquardt, but he won fair and square. Beat him up three rounds. You know, teed up. Uh, <clears throat> moving on to the co-main event. Donald Cerrone versus Miles Jury. This was an interesting one just because I like Donald Cerrone. He's a, he's a really, he's a, he's a good fighter. He's a cowboy. He, he comes from a very, I mean, he comes from a very strong uh, Muay Thai kickboxing background. I come from a very strong uh, stand-up background myself. Uh, and so that's why I usually like to go with the guys who are from stand-up backgrounds. Um, and uh, apparently, I, I thought that I, I thought that Miles Jury was gonna. The weird thing was, I still thought that Miles Jury was gonna beat Donald Cerrone, despite the fact that I love Donald Cerrone. I thought Miles Jury was gonna win just because how he was beating up everybody uh, prior to this fight. Uh, amazingly, Donald Cerrone whooped this kid's ass, and for three rounds, he whooped his ass. Uh, actually, it wasn't, it was it three? Oh, yeah, three rounds. He beat him up. Uh, first thing happened that I noticed right off the bat, uh, you know, he took him, he took his back, and, um, you know, he had, like, a couple of submissions that I could remember. Miles Jury was saved by the bell. At, I think it was round one or two in which he, uh, Cerrone had an arm bar, and the bell buzzed, and boom, that was it. Miles, you know, he's 26 years old. He tried to, he tried his best, but he just, he wasn't at that level. He clearly needs a little bit more maturing up to do as far as fighting is concerned. But Donald, Donald beat him up pretty, pretty good. 
Um, and teed off of him like, the entire fight. And what else have I written? There was this one kick that Donald Cerrone landed in round number three that hit Miles Jury square in the, like, I mean, this it was like a pop sound, like pop. That same sound you hear every time you kick somebody in the face. I know that because I happen to do that in some of my fights as well. And the sound is, it's, it's a popping sound. And I saw that. I actually thought that he was going to get knocked out. I was shocked that um, he wasn't knocked out because that was a hard kick. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 he duked it out. The kid was strong. He duked it out, and Miles Jury stuck in there, but lost the fight. Uh, clearly, clearly lost the fight. So, hats off to Cerrone. Congratulations. <sighs> Last but not least, guys, Daniel Cormier versus John Bones, Boney Jones. Cormier versus John Jones. Daniel Cormier versus John Jones. The reason I purchased this fucking card! The reason I wanted to see this! The reason I was waiting for this before Cormier got injured or something and that fight got postponed it till this year when I wanted to see it last year. The reason I spend 50 bucks on these things. <laughs> okay, let's go one by one. It was a five round fight. Um... I was I'm very dissatisfied with uh, Cormier. I was very dissatisfied with Cormier. Look, the first round, I can give it to... I understand the first two rounds. You know, as a fighter, I can tell you guys, whether it's a kickboxing match, or whether it's a, a karate fight, whether it's a MMA fight, whether it's any kind of fight, um, the first round, you really, you know, you're, you're, the anxiety, the nervousness, and I know a lot about that because I, I have it every time, or had it every time I fought. Uh... The nervousness is there, and especially if you're at the UFC level, at the pinnacle level of where these guys are at, uh, you know, and all the trash talking and all the hatred and all that back and forth that was going on for months comes down, boils down to that at one moment, so you can understand where the anxiety is coming from. So the anxiety that they both had was understandable, and the fact that the first round was a bit of like a feel round where they're just trying to get their blood flowing and they're trying to just get warmed up. I understand. That's all good. I can even give that the second round as well. That's that's cool, you know, because when you have championship level fighters, it's after the third round that I started getting really, really irritated with Cormier's performance. Just because, you know, I think he's a very, very tough fighter. I mean, this is a guy who fought at heavyweight um, and he knocked people out at heavyweight. And where was that knockout power in, in, in today's fight? Where, why wouldn't he let his hands go? I mean, he uses a technique that we have in MMA called the overhand right, which is a very popular technique done by many fighters in boxing as well as MMA. And that's the, one, of, uh, one of the hardest punches that finishes people. And it's 9 out of 10 if you land it, you're, you, you're, the guy's going down. He didn't, use that. Uh, he didn't use that technique at all. I mean, that was, the, that was that he's a small guy. He fought Bigfoot Silva. He knocked him out with an overhand right. He finished a guy like Patrick Cummings at 205. I believe it was 205. Yeah, 205. Patrick Cummings, he finished him off. Where was that fire in today's fight? Like, the first two rounds? Okay, I understand. You're fighting John Jones. You have anxiety. You know, it's build up. I understand. But why didn't you let your hands go in, in round three? There was no... Like, I couldn't see... All he was doing was dirty boxing in a clinch with Jones. And, and obviously, he's a taller guy. DC is a smaller guy. You're trying to do, like, you know, you're trying to do this. I mean, the chances of you hurting the guy is going to be slimmer because he's taller than you. So there's a lot more energy that you have to, you know, dispose while hitting him up here versus when somebody's down here, the power is a lot more. So, honestly, I I don't know why there was too much dirty boxing. When you, when, when what you should have done is after the third round when you've realized that your, your takedowns are not working and the clinch work is not working for you, you leave it out and you start trying to cut the distance in by faking the leg, by faking leg kicks and coming in and setting up for the overhand right. Boxing in. He hit Jones a few times. I'm not saying that. But the thing is that he would hit and then he would freeze and then he would go back to the clinch and that's where Jones was, you know, constantly doing his elbow. His elbow that he's great at doing. A short, you know, short range elbow that he's doing very well. And... He, again, he has a 12-inch reach advantage, which is which is really not fair, but 12 inches, it doesn't matter because Cormier fought at heavyweight, which are taller guys, so, I mean, there's really no excuse for him. But, I mean, you know, he's doing these techniques, 
And obviously you're sticking in the clinch. Now he exhausted himself so much trying to get a takedown that he didn't maybe have the energy left uh, to really finish John Jones. He could finish John Jones easy, man. If he can finish Bigfoot Silva uh, at heavyweight, uh, Patrick Cummings, who's also almost the same size as John Jones, or at least relatively same, why wouldn't he, you know, let himself go? I mean, according to my notes, you know, round one, absolutely dead even, seemed dead even to me. I mean, it's very difficult to score. Round two, you know, I mean, Joan was doing, I mean, he was doing a better job. Cormier did a better job in round two, but still, very hard to score. Not significant damage. Round three, super close, super close. I mean, it was really round four. It was really round four that really won this fight. Round four, when John Jones humiliated Daniel Cormier, humiliated Daniel Cormier by taking him down three times. I felt bad for him. I mean, I was rooting for DC all the way. I like Daniel Cormier. I don't like John Jones. I don't like fighters that are arrogant. It just happens to, it's, a, it's very much against the teachings of martial spirit that I was raised on. As a fighter myself, I can tell you that I always respect the opponent. Unless there's a lot of trash talk going on, that's something else. Um, but just, John Jones is one of those fake type guys, and he's very fake, and I didn't like him, and I'm not the only one. I know a lot of people don't like John Jones uh, for that reason, and it's against Marshall's spirit. But anyway, coming back to round four, I was with Daniel Cormier, and I wanted him to win. But round four, Jones took him down three times. DC just wanted to get, I believe he got one uh, takedown, which was in round five, but round four, uh, Jones practically, you know, teed off him the whole time. He humiliated him. And DC, I'm sure he didn't like that. Uh, round five, uh, <laughs> and something interesting happened in round five. DC took him down. He threw him over his head just because he wanted to prove something. <clears throat> Jones puts his hands up, I think, 10 seconds before the fight was over. And uh, then he cheap shots DC, right? To, like, give him a more insulting of a, a, you know, make him feel even more insulted. And DC got really pissed off. And I think in one of the shots that he tried to hit Jones with, I think he clipped Jones a little bit. But then he hit the referee, Herb Dean. Which, uh, not, not, he didn't, thank God he didn't catch him clean off, otherwise it'll be the first time in history that somebody knocked out the referee. <laughs> I would love to see that, by the way, but not just, to, you know, not to hurt me. Maybe Steve Masagati. Uh, but knocked him out, you know, hurt, hurt, hurt Herb Dean with his punches. It was weird. Uh, never saw that before. And then he, the, the DC stormed off. There was really no post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, like it usually happens in every UFC fight. And obviously John Jones, being who he is, spoke, like... Oh, I don't want to tell the haters, fuck the haters, you know, I don't like Daniel Cormier, I'm so sorry I'm acting so classly. Well, you're not acting cla you're acting classless because you are classless, because you're fake. But anyway, guys, I uh, hope and pray to God that Gustafson comes and whoops his ass. Um, I hope so, I hope that happens. I hope Patrick Cummings comes and beats his ass. Maybe that'll happen, who knows, we don't know. Uh, but guys, uh, you know, in closing, I'd like to say I was very disappointed with Cormier. Um, I, gave, I don't mind the first two rounds. The third round is when he should have started getting more busy with his boxing. Fourth round, he should have forgotten about wrestling. Worked clearly on his boxing. Worked on the overhand rights. Worked on the body punches. Instead of doing the stupid clinch thing and starting to... You should have moved away from Cor uh, Jones. Clearly moved away from Jones and then finished him off. Take it to him. Of course, you got to cut that distance. But constantly being in the clinch wasn't helping him. Because that's all that was happening to him the entire time. You know, the close elbow shots. Boom! You know, that was like, wakes you up all of a sudden. Then, you know, all that stuff. So I thought that if he had let go of his hands a little bit more, Cormier, if he just did more overhand techniques, set his punches up a lot more, maybe he could have landed a really hard shot on Jones and finished him off. And we would have had a new, new light heavyweight champion. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. So hopefully, uh, maybe Gustafsson, maybe Patrick Cummings. Let's see. Anyway, guys, the new uh, the next UFC is January 31st, I believe, UFC 183. Uh, I'm not too eager about it. I'm not too clear about it. I'm not. I'm like John Jones. I'm not a very big Silva fan either uh, for the same reasons. Now he's humbled out. But uh, he's uh, Nick Diaz is a walking punching bag for him. So 9 out of 10, they gave him an easy fight for his recovery. Uh, I don't think Nick Diaz is going to win this fight, no matter, even though I would want Nick Diaz to win. But let's see. Let's see how that turns out. Okay, guys, uh, for now... Battles of the White Dragon Masters out. <coughs> Excuse me. I said I'm sick. Please 
subscribe. If you like this video, if you like the White Dragons analysis, if you like me, please subscribe and share. You'll love my work. I'm also a fighter and a martial artist myself, and I'm also an actor, so watch me. I'm going to be there. Battle of the White Dragon Masters, out! Hey -ya, hey -ya, hey -ya.